Hi, this is Jan Reardon, and I am the host of The Kindness Connection, which is a fabulous show that we are able to air every uh, third Thursday of each month. And this particular um, Thursday here in March, on March 17th, I have uh, two very, very special guests um, near and dear to my heart. I've enjoyed every show so far, but the fact that I have uh, the guest that I have with me today uh, means a great deal to me. Um, and I just wanted to be able to introduce um, Jen and Mike's, Jen, my brother, Mike, and his wife, Jennifer Reardon's children. I have Josh Reardon here, and he is 14 years old, and I have Avery Reardon here, and she is 16. So today we are going to discuss very openly and looking forward to having a nice conversation. Oops, I'm sorry, I left out Aspen Reardon over here, this cute little girl. She is my other niece, and we'd love to have Aspen here with us as well. And we have all our Sparky Kindness Bears, thanks to Vermont Teddy Bear. They created this bear in honor of Jennifer Reardon for her mantra of being kind, loving, caring, and sharing. So we have kindness bears that have brought a lot of compassion and love to many, many people, uh, Vermont Teddy Bear has been fabulous with endorsing the, uh, the mantra that Jen had. And so today we're going to talk about um, being able to look at, at kindness through a young adult's perspective. You know, as adults, we might have some preconceived notion of what kindness means, but I think it's really important to know how that begins and how in this day and age with all of the bullying going on in schools and just the world is, is obviously a, in, a, in a tough place right now and how young adults can really make a difference in the world. So I'd like to start by just asking my first question to, to Avery and to Josh, and uh, we'll take it from there. But I'd like to begin with you, Josh, if I may, and just ask you what your definition of kindness is. So, uh, so kindness to me is, uh, is really just what you put out in the world is what you come, what comes back to you in a kind way. And if you put out something that's kind in a, uh, in a very nice and polite way, or uh, you just you're there for somebody, yes, um, it's the best way to, uh, to just have happiness and kindness in the world. And uh, every day we strive to make the world a better place. So uh, just by a helping hand is always the biggest part of kindness and so yeah that's what I think and I believe that kindness is beautiful that's a great perspective how about you Avery what, what is what are your thoughts on what kindness the definition of kindness to you um I would say it's not always the big things in life but just the little things you do for people like holding the door complimenting them or just being respectful towards people very nice I love it I love it let's see what else we have here um how do you um how do you feel as though kindness has impacted your life, Josh? So uh, in my life, like it's a, uh, I grew up with a fortunate, very uh, lucky to have two great parents that raised me amazingly. And uh, so kindness to me would be anything that they do for me to, to help me or to come for me. Like it could be making me breakfast. It could be buying me a bat. It could be uh, like, giving me a ride to school. Like it's all the, like, like Avery said, it's like the little things in, in life that people do for you that you don't really understand. And a lot of people don't, a lot of people take it for granted. And I always try to think about how that is impacting my life. Good. I love it. Yeah, a lot of people overlook those little things that happen. And when you stop and think about it, it really fills you up to know how other people care about you and how much that can make you feel better about yourself as well. Now, how about you, Avery? What would you say? Um, I would say that with the kindness that I'm given, I'm able to share it with other people. So with having such kind parents and people around me who really care and love for me, I think it's really easy for me to take how they love me and show that towards other people. Perfect. And that makes a big difference. Yeah. Josh, how would you say that kindness could help to reduce um, bullying in school? That's a great question. So uh, bullying in schools is not, not a good thing, obviously. And uh, it's hard for a lot of people to go through somebody who's bullying you because you feel like you don't have help sometimes. Um, but 
uh, when someone's getting bullied, the bully always has something going on with them to make them feel this way, to make them want to hurt other people. Mm -hmm. And so if you show them more kindness than like you know how to show, you just give them as much kindness as possible. I feel that that can really fix a lot of bullies mentalities to the way they treat people. Um, so yeah. Good. Good. How about you, Avery? What would you say could be done to reduce bullying? Yeah, I agree with Josh. I think that instead of having harsh reactions to bullies, like putting them in detention or um, kind of, I don't know, just giving them harsh words, it should be like things that they could do to be kind towards community. And if you see that someone is being bullied, I think that as kids, we should step in first and try to give them ways to be kind to others because we're the same age, so we know how to connect to that or we can help more than like if uh, older people have to get involved, it might be different from their point of view. So I think point. just showing kindness to them and showing them ways to be kind to people instead of bullying people, right? So Josh, what do you, could you give us an example of something that you have done um, or has been done to you or both um, regarding kindness or compassion or understanding? Like what comes to mind for you? So like I said, I, I grew up in a very, uh, a very kind family that just always was there for me whenever I needed anything. And so uh, I don't think that there's one really big thing that sticks out that was the kindest. I think that everything that is done for me is just done with su such care and kindness. And uh, so I'm very fortunate to have that. A lot of people don't have that. And, uh, and I want them to have that. And that's like one of the main reasons for this podcast and or this TV show, sorry. And uh, my dad's foundation, that's like one of the main purposes of it is to just go out in the world and show people that there are good people out here. That, that care for them, that want them to be good. So um, yeah, but there's not just one big thing. It's everything that I do for other people mostly uh, and everything that's done to me that could be making a waffle or uh, giving me a boat ride or anything that is just something that to be grateful for. Yeah. And I'm grateful every day for everything that I ever have. And uh, sometimes when I'm not grateful, I just think about the, the, the time that I need to be grateful and the things that I have. And there's a lot of unfortunate people out there, which is really unfortunate. So I think that just life, my life is uh, very kind and blessed. caring and blessed. Right. How do you think you can carry that forward into the community so that more people will have just even a, a bit of that in their heart? So, yeah. So uh, that's kind of what the foundation is all about. It's really just giving to people that don't have uh, kindness in their life or they're just feeling down and they just can't get themselves back together. So uh, giving is just a very great thing. I think that our foundation really displays that. Can you tell us a little bit more about the foundation? So uh, our family's motto uh, was always to be kind, loving, caring, and sharing. And so, uh, so my dad started a foundation for my mom. It's about uh, just giving back to the community what they gave to us and really just displaying how kind our Albuquerque is really because uh, Albuquerque is a great city to live in and uh, we just want to display how it is. And I think we're 26th, we're the 26th kindest, kindest city. city in the world or in the, in the country. So. We're trying to get to number one, but I mean, it's just a, just be kind to people. Uh, it always lightens their day, makes people feel happy. That's awesome. How about you, Abe? What do you think as far as, you know, either a kind act that you've done or somebody has done for you to get you to where you are today? Yeah, like I said, I think it's the small things. I don't think there's one big thing that stands out, kind of like Josh said. Right. But I think what the foundation is doing is are the really big things that stand out to me. Um, like giving back to our community or um, my team for volleyball, we go do food drives and oh, stuff beautiful. like that. So I think those things, just giving back to the community, like even if you're not hands-on with someone, um, helping them on the street, just being able to go to Roadrunner Food Bank is a great place to go to 
um, not package meals for homeless and um, it could be as big as that. We're just holding the door for someone exactly. saying thank right. you. Right. Yeah, I love it. Josh, how about, um, let me see how I really want to word this, but what would you say you can do when you're not really feeling kind? And it happens to all of us. We can't deny that there are moments when we're down and it's a little bit more challenging to be hard, um, harder to be kind at the, that time. How can you be kind under stress and under duress? Because that's when I think other people lash out and that's what we have to diffuse. So how do you do that yourself? So to me, this is kind of like a personal question because everybody handles it differently. Uh, so uh, to think about, now for me, there I have a lot of stuff that I could just think about and be grateful for and that gets me back in the kindest mood. But I want to talk about... Uh, people that don't have exactly. stuff to be grateful for and I've always wondered how they get back to being exactly. kind because there's a lot of kind people out there that really they could not be kind if they if they uh like because of their situation exactly but they are and uh so uh for me what I think happens is uh, they 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 find hope they find hope for themselves they find hope for others they find they find a way to uh, be kind in a hopeful way. And so uh, much as giving them a dollar to go get food or right. uh, giving them a meal or giving them a drink or giving them a pillow or giving them a sure. blanket, right. just all these things just puts hope in their soul to go another day, to survive another day and right. to move on, keep progressing. Right. In small increments like that, right. Don't look too far ahead. Just kind of stay in that moment and try to feel better. I, I feel that it always works out in the long run for those people. Definitely. That's great. How about you, Avery? Um, I would say that it is hard for me to be kind whenever I am in a hard, tough situation or I'm not, if I'm stressed about school. So I think the first thing I need to do is be kind to myself and take a moment to just have some self-care within myself, take care of my body, take care of my mental state. And until mm -hmm. then, just kind of um, be as kind as I can to people just instead of I don't I don't have to go out of my way to be kind to them instead be kind to myself first but don't be rude to them and just kind of let them do their thing until I figure out my thing and then I can go back to going out of my way to be kind to them. Right that's yeah. good that's healthy that's what we need to do and that makes for a better community better relationships better friendships. So let's see, Aves, can you tell us a little bit about the junior board and what the goals are for as you're involved and maybe just tell us a little bit about the Jennifer Rudin Foundation, given your role as a member of the junior board? Yeah, so uh, the first meeting we have for the junior board was kind of a while ago. Um, we haven't really met again since then, but I remember at that meeting we did talk about doing things for homeless and um, food drives and stuff like that. Um, we also picked a... Um, nonprofit to give money to and I feel like that is a great way to help in the community there's a lot of um, profits out there that are helping and instead of being hands-on with people and, and if you don't want to do volunteer work and if you have you are fortunate enough giving money toward people who are helping others is a great way to help the community definitely yeah it's good how about you Josh what, what is your take as far as your role and how it impacts the community by what you do on the um, Jennifer Rudin Foundation Junior Board. Yeah, so me and Avery, uh, we came to that with an idea uh, of a junior board, and he was hands-on with it. He said that it was a great idea, and so we run it out of the Albuquerque uh, Community Foundation building, and yeah, so Avery kind of covered it. It's a nonprofit. We give it out to a nonprofit almost like every six months, I'd like to say, and that's just really a way to, it's me and Avery's way to be a part of what my dad has created and really uh, give back to the community as a young kid or as a young adult. Right. So to give back to the community in a different way uh, as a board, uh, it's really nice. Good. Do you feel as though your friends have noticed a difference in you? now that you are so focused on sharing kindness? So you'd have to ask them that question, <laughs> but- uh, Do you I feel that in yourself? Yeah, I feel that I, 
have become more of a kind person uh, because of our foundation and because of what you're doing. Like every uh, every person that just wants to help just warms my heart because this is really what my mom would want. Exactly. So uh, this is just really warms my heart. So yeah. Perfect. I love it. How about you, Avery? Um, I would say, yeah, I would say before I was kind, but I think I'm very more like approach to it. And I, I understand how to be kind to people. If I see someone down, I can cheer them up and just more prone to it. Good. Yeah. And how about at school, Josh, are there any programs that are in place that revolve around kindness or sharing compassionate, you know, understanding ways? So we go to a, uh, me and Avery both go to a great school. Avery's a sophomore, I'm an eighth grader. And uh, so we go to a very uh, fortunate school in a way that they want you to be kind to others. They want you to uh, be yourself. They don't want you to just be another kid. They want you to grow as a human being as yourself and not as anybody else. And, um, so they have so many like different clubs there and uh, you can join any of them. There is a kindness club at our school and they do do a lot of stuff for the community. I think uh, kindness does start with the community, in my opinion. Uh, actually, kindness starts with yourself and then co- goes to your community. But yeah, so our school has a kindness club and they're just, they go around and they're just very kind to other people. And sometimes they give a cookie to the kid that's sad or sometimes just the little things like Avery said that really light the kids day when they're feeling bad. Good, I love it. How about you, Ace? What do you say about the school as far as some different programs that are in place that help? Yeah, um, there's a another club called Helping Hands that I was with last year. And one of the little things that we did was during the food drive um, for the elderly people, um, we went and we gave roses and just a nice card to the people um, just to lighten their day, just something small to do for them. Also, our school is connected with the app, so everyone at our school is, if they see an act of kindness, they're able to log it. So I think that's, our school is doing really good involving kindness throughout. Wonderful. Yeah. And do you find that that's the case at most schools, or is that unusual? Yeah, I, I feel like some schools um, are doing better with kindness, and our app is actually connected towards some schools um, throughout Albuquerque. Um there are some schools that have difficulty with it because of the students or just the district that it's in, but um, I feel like there are kind people there, and I think those people struggle with being kind towards the other kids because they feel like it's um, different, and it's hard to be different, especially in high school, but I think once those kids reach out and are kind towards others, that it will be, kindness is going to be spread everywhere. It would be nice to just think of it as the new normal. Yeah. Like all of a sudden it's just, that's the way it is. And exactly. it becomes part of our DNA, really. Mm-hmm. It's more of the culture. Yeah. Josh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about our day yesterday when we went over to uh, Jess's kindergarten class and how uh, great that felt. Yeah. Just yeah. So we give us over, a little background on that. We went over to a uh, kindergarten classroom uh, and we got to really just put a light on kids day there and I don't know if they were having a bad day or not, and some of them were having a good day, and this made it better, but all I know is this this particular moment made those kids so happy, and it just warmed my heart to see every, every little kid so happy, and so uh, we went over, and we really just told them or talked to them about kindness and how they can, what they have done in, to help us, because everyone has helped the community in different ways uh, through kindness or just through like helping someone. And so, uh, but yeah, so we got to go over there and we really just got to be with the kids and hear what they've done for the community. And it was really nice. Good. Abe, what do you have to say about our day yesterday over in the classroom? Um, I would say that it was really heartwarming to know that even five-year-olds understand the concept of what like sure. kindness is. It was so cool to hear we asked each one of them to stand up and talk about one kind thing they did. And it was super cool to hear the nice things they were doing within their family or at school. And I think it was really like, they loved the bear. They were so intrigued with Sparky. They loved him so much. And I think it's just really cool to understand that. Like it's hard to understand kindness sometimes, but it sounds like these kids have such a good grasp of it. And they were so grateful when they received, we gave them bracelets. And so, 
that made their day and it was good to know that they were starting their day off with a kind thing or just even thinking about something kind they did and they can redo that and I know some of the other kids were helping just their friends in the classroom. So exactly. it was easy. Exactly. It was, it, was. Yeah. it really was. Josh, what would you say, you know, you get up in the morning, do you try to you know, take a minute and start your day with that grateful heart? Or does it come throughout the day? Like what would, how would you describe like the best day that you could have for yourself? So my best day would, uh, would be probably every day. I mean, I wake up to a great house and a roof over my head and, watered food and um and i'm just grateful for that right off the bat and so you think about that when you get up you you feel that so i'm going to be honest not every time yeah, of course not, not always right. but i try to that's the biggest part of the day is the morning is when you wake up how you feel right. how you're going to act that day how you're going to get up and push through the day and there's there's going to be hatred there's going to be stuff throughout the day that you're not going to like it's how you can come back from that and exactly answer to that so Perfect. how about you Avery when you start the day out what what's your plan for the day how do you go into it um I would say that being kind to myself first is a really big thing and starting the day off um telling myself how to be kind to myself and um just really taking care of my body and then I would say just again the little things when I see someone if I think they look good then I'll let them know and nice. I think it does come throughout the day for me if people are treating me kind then I have a more want to be kind to other people um but I feel like it's I am grateful for in each morning it's good to know that like I know that there will be kind people around me at some point good. yeah it's great <laughs> so Josh what do you think about fast forward Josh Reardon's you know 21 years old what do you what do you want to see as, as yourself as a young man? Um, I want to see compassion. It would be the biggest part. I would I would want to see um, uh, just I would want to see Albuquerque being so kind that people want uh, to be around each other and to see each other. Uh, so yeah, so I just think that in the future. Uh, the world could be a lot kinder than it already is a lot, a lot kinder. And so uh, I think that every day we just get even more kind. And hopefully when I'm 21, we can be the number one kindest city in the world. How about you, Abe? You're fast forward, you're 21 years old. What what do you see yourself looking like at that point? Um, I would hope to be able to um, be kind towards others still and just like more and instead of doing little things, I think it would be good to start doing bigger things. Um, and also just like reaching out to more people to be kind, um, not in Albuquerque, but other places as well. Um, I agree with Josh being the number one city would be great. Right. And I think just carrying on the legacy of always being kind, living, caring, and sharing is the best we can do with things. And I think just always being kind towards others is kind of where I see it. Good. Yeah. And then Josh, can you think of a time when say you were at school or at baseball and you saw one of the guys or, or girls you know, at school that was a little down, not having a good day? How would you handle that? Well, sometimes someone just needs time to put it out there, just cry, just do whatever. But um, so I would just kind of approach them and uh, and if they asked me to leave them be, I'd just leave them be. And then in an hour, I'd go back and check on them and make sure they were okay. But uh, if someone just needs a hug or needs a helping hand, something, it's always nice to know that, for, like for me, it's always nice to know that you're here for me. Right. You're here Thank if you. I'm down and Absolutely. I need a hug or I need something, right? You're here Absolutely. for that. I mean, not just that, but I'm just saying, like, sure, you're here yeah. for me. Right. And you are here for me because you're my sister. Like, so I just have a lot of people that are there for me, but some kids don't have anybody. Mm -hmm. And so just to be that person for somebody is a really big thing. Beautiful. How about you, Abe? Have you noticed somebody that's down and how would you handle that? Yeah, I think the first thing to do is just ask them if they're okay. And if they don't want to talk about it, then you did what you could to help them at that point. Um, just checking in with them, like continuously, I think is good. Maybe not like two seconds later, but 
a little like an hour or two later, just making sure that they're okay. Because all you can do is help. Um, all support. you can do is ask. Yeah. And if they don't want to talk about it, then that's okay. And that's on them. I think just um, checking in with them and checking in, especially if it gets like too super bad with their other peers or teachers or guardians, um, just making sure that they're okay. And maybe like bring them a treat to school or just act extra kind to them that day. Fabulous. Yeah. We only have about five minutes left. So why don't we, you know, just give a shout out to your dad as far as the foundation and what he has done and what type of um, impact that has had on your life. I mean, you've talked about kindness and you, thankfully you've had that mm -hmm. since you were born, um, but now things, you know, have changed and you have both done an amazing job accepting the reality and watching your dad really carry um, the mantra of your mom through you out into the world. So what would you say, Josh, that you're most grateful for as far as all that your dad has done, whether it be the foundation or other than that? I'm just grateful that he's here for us every day, That's right. right? He he wants our opinion on stuff that that really is not our voice to say anything. And so he is not only carrying mom's legacy, he wants us to be a part of it. Exactly. He wants us to be involved with it. He doesn't want us to just sit there and watch it work. Exactly. He just wants, he wants, like every decision that he makes is passed by by us. Yes. Which now, is maybe some decisions we don't like, but he'll still do because that's what he needs to have. That's what needs to happen. But um, it's kind of like a presidency. Yes, absolutely. He's the president. We're just the council. And we just right. listen and we just advise. Really, yeah, we just your really, perspective is important. Really uh, tell him what, what we see and how we would fix it and uh, or how we would do it. And he takes it into accountability. And that's really what I appreciate because. You can't always take our opinion 100% of the time, and I don't expect it to. But I, it's a part of I do process. expect him to listen, and he really does do that. So I really just thank him for that. So, Dad, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> and, and along the same lines, I mean, I don't think we could come up with a better um, example, unfortunately, of somebody taking, you know, a complete, you know, tragedy and turning it into something that has provided so much good. Mm -hmm. And so for that, what what comes to mind for you when if you were to describe your dad to somebody who didn't know him and somebody that comes out of such tragedy and sets such an example for a way to get through that you say like power through how would you describe your dad the strongest kindest man in the world I agree. The, the person that that if you need a helping hand he's there right away and the person that is there for you when you don't have anybody the, the person that I want to live up to is right. my career. There you go. All right. How about you, Ames? What would you say to that whole scenario of taking the most tragic situation possible and finding just something good about it and carrying on what you've done? How do you yeah. how do you attribute you know that to your dad instilling that in you? I feel like the biggest thing for me uh, was the isotopes game when oh, we did yes. the kind yes. of um, that was such a good, happy feeling. And Just talk a little bit about that event because that was awesome. I'm glad yeah, you brought so that up. we actually had, there was an isotopes game and we just- The Kindness Night? Yeah, it was a Kindness Night at the, night the park. Yeah. And we had our booth and we were giving things away and we connected people with the app. Um, so that was really good. And um, I think that's when I like noticed that we did make such a bad thing in life, something good. And we found a positive in it. And I think that our whole family is so strong for that. And I Absolutely. think none of us could have done it without anyone, especially my dad. Exactly. Um, but I think the foundation is just a way to show love and kindness through our family and also to other people. I think it's good for other people to see the love that our family has. Absolutely. Yeah. What an example. Yes. He's the hardest working man you'll ever meet. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Nonstop. Mm -hmm. Right. And speaking, you referred to the app, and, and obviously I know what the app is, but can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so the app is, um, you can go to the um, internet and search the Jennifer Reardon Foundation, and you can go to My Kindness app, um, and you can, every time you, um, so you log in, and every time you see an act of kindness or receive an act of kindness, you can just put it in there, and everybody can go through and see 
your acts of kindness and it's just you reached a million acts yes. of kindness yes. um um like a month or two ago and that was really good big celebration yeah that was a big celebration and so now we're just pushing through and trying to get into two millions yes right and like the kindergarten kids said yesterday, yeah. what was their number? They said, instead of like hitting a trillion, what did they say? They, they said Google. Yeah, like the biggest number they could think of, right? So, right. Josh, what about, can you tell us a little bit more about the app? Some of the uh, acts of kindness that have been logged on there that stick out in your mind? So, um, so acts of kindness on the app, they can be anonymous and they can be put out there, but uh, there's so many good people in the world and like every time you look at them you're just like there is people in the world that care and want to be kind and um so yeah so it goes it ranges from a million cans of soup to a food bank to help someone pick up trash exactly like it just i mean it just ranges from everything and i think that's what we love so much about it is there's like a billion different kind acts that you can do in the world Exactly. And I think that we've seen all the billing. Right. And what I like about the way it's posted, it's not, you can post what you do, you can post what you saw somebody else do, but I love the fact that that just makes you feel better. When you read about something that somebody else did, or you hear about something that somebody else did, it doesn't have to be, you're not even involved, but it just makes you feel good about human kindness yeah. and, and the fact that, it, you know, the more of that that you hear, it just sets a tone for a better culture. Yeah, and I would say if you are having a down day, one of yeah. the ways to be kind to others is just read some of the There you go. Guys. That's a great point. It really does. It lifts your spirits. Mm -hmm. You just feel like, you know, we're just a little part of this big yeah. world. And sometimes we get weighed down with our, you know, day-to-day -day issues. But then you look at the bigger picture and you realize, you know, there's there's many more things that are more important than certainly the material things. Exactly. And it's great to recognize somebody for that gift that they have of, of being loving. Mm -hmm. So we only have a minute left. Any questions that um, either one of you would like to ask me? Why did you want to start this mm -hmm. TV show? Oh, I wanted to start this because we had um, had a podcast that uh, was running and that was fun, but it wasn't reaching as many people. And thankfully, um, Channel 17, which is Town Meeting TV right in Burlington, Vermont, was I put in a proposal and they were willing to try this, which was a little bit out of their box. But again, in this day and age, people are gravitating toward things such as this. And thankfully they were gracious enough to um, make my request a reality. And uh, this is the third episode so far. And it, and, you know, something that I would love to continue with. And just even if one or two people take something away from this mm -hmm. uh, each episode, I will feel as though it was worthwhile. And the support that I've had from Town Meeting TV um, warms my heart. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the Dion's flyer? Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll, we'll call it a wrap. But we, right, last year when we were really going through this, you know, awareness of acts of kindness, Dion was a local partner, which was amazing. And here is the flyer that they were able to put on every pizza that was uh, sold. Yeah, and, and it just talks about the app and how to get signed up so that everybody is logging acts of kindness. And it worked, it was great. And Dion stepped right up and they were just a fabulous partner. There have been so many wonderful partners here in Albuquerque. And again, as I mentioned back in Vermont, Time Meeting TV has been great. And also from on Teddy Bear, we have a couple of other collaborations underway. Colchester High School, which is where Jen graduated from, has uh, planted a tree. And now their art students are working on uh, mosaic tiles to tell the story of Jen being kind, loving, caring, sharing that will surround the tree as you enter into the school because that school was near and dear to her heart. And this is a way for her legacy to carry on locally as well as uh, nationally as it has. But this is it, kids, it's a wrap. So you just have to remember to be nice to me when, once we turn this camera off. Okay, do I have a yes? Do we have a yes? Do we have a yes? <laughs> I'm there. Okay, that's a wrap. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.